Hey, it's Ellie Jane. I just had a chat with ChatGPT. It was all about love. I can't wait to tell you all about it. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Ellie Jane. Nice to meet you. I'm kind of nicheless right now. I'm basically doing any type of content I feel like making. So if you're into that, welcome. Today we have a very special guest. They're actually in very high demand. Sometimes you can't even get in contact with this guest of ours. And today's our lucky day. I was able to make the connection, if you will. So our guest is right here, ChatGBT. Here we have her, him, whatever. Originally, I wanted to ask on Instagram for people to ask me questions about love or advice, but I figured just to make it different, honestly, like I've been really interested in this technology, I've never used it, and if you're not familiar with it, basically, ChatGPT is AI technology. I'm not sure how long it's been out, but basically, you can ask it to do anything that requires like thinking like ideas. If you need ideas for your channel, if you want to write a resume, if you want to write a script for a podcast, I feel like in the content area, it is very useful if you need some inspiration, ideas, if you needed it in like a thousand characters or double-spaced, single-spaced, whatever, like you can get into the details with this thing. Of course, it's not 100% accurate, but that's something that they are working on. A little scary, but honestly, like technological advancement is exciting to me. So I'm really excited to use this. I haven't even tried it. I'm just gonna have a sip of hot water. It's really chilly right now. It's like minus 25, but honestly, let me just grab a blanket one second. Okay, we're getting cozy. Um, okay. So I'm gonna try to screen record this. I'm the type of person who's constantly running out of space on their phone. So we'll see how well this works. Let's be polite. Hi, chat GPT. Can you ask me 10? questions about love. Okay, so I'm just gonna start off by reading the first question, okay? I'm not gonna go into the other ones. They're currently talking. Um, oh, here. <laughs> this is really interesting. I'm actually so excited for this and I'm gonna start using this as a mic. This feels like a microphone. This is just like a 1920s uh, phone and I thought it was a cool prop and I was like, why not just like use it? So I'm gonna use it like it's a microphone, okay? I'm not gonna look at the proceeding questions, so we'll start off with question number one. Chat GPT asks, what is your definition of love? Whew, we're starting off deep. No pun intended. <laughs> Just to preface this, I have been in a long-term relationship four and a half years with my partner, KT. He's the love of my life. And I have been with two other men prior to this relationship. The first one was like hella dry. The second one was toxic. This is the most healthy relationship I could have ever dreamed of. And I'm not saying that in like a braggy way, but I am like truly blessed to be in a healthy relationship. So my definition of love is um, a unconditional exchange of energy in all forms, spiritual, emotional, physical. Question number two. What do you think are the most important characteristics in a romantic partner? Ooh, okay. Let's do three because that's just like the magic number. I would say thoughtfulness. So just, you know, putting thought into anything, whether, you know, you you surprise them with a home-cooked meal and like add a little something, a little side dish that you didn't tell them about. If you pick up on something that they said in a conversation and you surprise them with it one day or yeah, two setting the vibe okay kt can be such a romantic sometimes like when we're in the kitchen cooking he'll just like step away and i'm like dude like where are you going we're cooking right now and he goes to like turn on the speaker and just like play some feel good cooking music and it actually sets the vibe or he'll like light a candle and i'm honestly pretty lazy with lighting candles or like doing little things like that but he is all about setting the vibe which can be romantic and just like, it doesn't even have to be romantic, but it's just like setting the energy and oh, I'm actually getting cold. I should have worn this dress. Three, I think this is like very obvious, but affection, you know, like whether you're holding hands or like cuddling up on the couch, like those little things can be like so romantic. Sneaking a kiss when you're in public, like those are just like really easy ways to bring romance in your everyday life. 
which wasn't really the question, but yeah. <laughs> question number three. How do you know when you're in love with someone? I love this question. Um, okay. I feel so cold right now. I literally have to wrap this blanket around me. One second. Not me like keeping my mouth to the mic because if it's actually like doing something. Whew. This is like super cliche, but you just know it. You'll know it when you feel it. And you don't have to question yourself and ask, am I in love with this person? It's almost like when you taste a new dish, you automatically know if you like it or not. Mm, this one has a little sweetness to it. So if you're like seeing someone more, you're just like attracted to them when you're not even together. You're constantly thinking of them. You just always want to be with them, but it just goes deeper. Like it's so easy to do things for them, even if you wouldn't want to do that thing for anybody else or if you can just like look at them and just like instantly feel happy and you're just always craving their energy, their company. They just make you feel good and you just get giddy. You have like this feeling in your stomach, like the butterflies are a real feeling. I'm still like very much in love with my partner and it's just a warm, warm feeling. I don't know if I even answered this well, but next question. How do you think love can be nurtured and maintained in a relationship? This is a really good question actually. So I think the way that this question is phrased kind of makes you think of love as like its own entity and that's kind of interesting because i never really thought about it that way it's almost like your love is your child in a sense like you can take care of it as well as you choose to and especially in times of disagreement during arguments you can either choose to side with yourself or you can choose to side with love your partner and you have to look at your partner as your teammate and not someone that you're working against. You're not approaching these tough situations thinking, I wanna be the one that wins and comes out of this argument as the winner. Like there is no winner. As long as you make it through together, you both win. And as long as you see your own faults and your imperfections and actually work on it, um, then you're nurturing yourself, you're nurturing your relationship, and as cliche as it is, like you have to first love yourself to to wholly love another, then I think you're you're nurturing love. Yes. <laughs> okay, number five. What do you think are the biggest obstacles to finding love? People are seeking love in another to fill the love that they have for themselves. I see it all the time where people think that they need a relationship to be happy with themselves, to feel good about themselves, and like real love, I believe, actually starts with you. I feel like this happens to so many people, but it's honestly like what happened with me. I wasn't seeking a relationship after my relationship before my partner ended and KT just kind of like came into my life. He was like my friend for a little bit and it just blossomed from there. But I wasn't looking for a relationship and it was actually such a breakthrough moment for me because I did have such a toxic relationship prior. I remember the moment that I had the epiphany that I did not deserve the way that I was being treated in my last relationship. And I was laying in bed and I was like, what? Am I actually like, how am I letting this happen to me? Like I deserve a partner who loves me the way that I want to be loved and the way that I want to love them. I believe that everything happens for a reason and the universe is always conspiring to bring good into your life. You just have to listen and meet it halfway. Yeah, when I had that moment, it was like everything was just like falling into place. Like I was hanging out with KT more and like he was like such a great friend to me and it just kind of blossomed from there. We established like a really great friendship as like our base for our relationship. All in all, I believe the love starts with you and everything else will just ripple after that once you like really do love yourself. And I'm not saying I'm, not, I'm over like 100% of my insecurities because I'm not, but it's when you know what you deserve and you work with your insecurities and improve yourself every single day. And yeah, you just aim to keep evolving really. Next question. 
How do you think a person can best prepare themselves for a healthy, loving relationship? Okay, this is literally like a repetition of the last answer, but basically love yourself the way that you want to be loved. If you are thinking these negative thoughts, if you are shaming yourself, if you are constantly like having these thoughts about yourself that aren't making you feel better about you, you're not having a loving relationship with yourself and therefore it's going to ripple into your relationship and i have experienced this i sometimes you know slip up and my insecurities get the best of me because that's literally what they do right your insecurities get the best of you and that will affect the person that you're with because you're taking out your insecurities on them you're affecting the energy that you're both in the space that you're both in and like I, I am really truly speaking from my experience because uh this is something that i still work on do the inner work really spend time with yourself we are so distracted in this world there's so much technology phones you can literally do anything to distract yourself from dealing with the thoughts in here and if you want to create a healthy basis for a relationship first create a healthy base for a relationship with yourself next question how do you think past experiences can affect one's ability to love in the present? It's kind of funny that this is a question. I think about this all the time. Basically like the toxicity of my previous relationship obviously did not just like wash away once that relationship ended. A lot of insecurities and paranoia still lingered with me and some little bits of that still linger today, many years later. So these insecurities and this paranoia, like it could have prevented me from wanting to be with someone if you were cheated on or physically hurt or mentally abused or verbally abused or anything of that nature. Obviously that, that makes you put your guard up and I could have walked away from my last relationship thinking screw men like I do not want to be in a relationship ever again and I feel like a lot of people who have bad experiences with another person will have that outlook on other people for I don't even know like the rest of their life for many years and they just become so guarded and I think once you allow yourself to realize like not everyone is gonna be like that person then you'll be open to loving again and of course that time to recover is so important. I think it's inevitable that your guard will be up if you had bad experiences like that, but I don't think it's impossible as long as you do the inner work and you realize like that relationship wasn't for you, but that doesn't mean another won't be, then you will 100% be able to love again. There are amazing people in this world as much as there are people that could use some self-love, there are people that are already on their journey to loving themselves or already do love themselves so much and are ready to accept your love and I think that you can never lose hope in love because love, I believe, is the most powerful thing. Next question. How do you think cultural or societal expectations shape our understanding of love? This is big because my partner and I are both first Canadian born in our family lineage. And so our parents coming from, you know, their respective homes, home countries, their culture was a lot stronger. So coming here, you know, they had their expectations for how relationships work. And for me to grow up in Canada, obviously the societal and cultural expectations of love are different from that of the Philippines or Ethiopia for my partner. It was tough at first. I, I felt like a lot of expectations that I was projecting onto my partner was because those expectations were projecting from my parents. And even though I didn't necessarily agree with them, I unconsciously was projecting these expectations onto my partner. I think it's really important to take the time to think about the decisions that you make or the opinions that you have and just ask yourself, where is this opinion coming from? Do I genuinely believe that this is how I feel? Or do I feel this way because these expectations were projected from somebody else? And once you determine that and you are comfortable with creating your own expectations, your relationship and your mind will feel so much more free and you have to genuinely be unafraid 
of letting people down or disappointing them. Just setting up a new standard for yourself and for your relationship. Not letting the opinions of others affect your decisions. I think that is so important when you can come to decisions without the opinions of others. How do you think communication plays a role in love and relationships? I can't get over how good these questions are. Okay, so first of all, I was not a good communicator at all. Like, I used to be a very, very shy person, and honestly, I, I am more reserved still, but I would be so shy to the point that like I wouldn't even tell my partner like how I felt about anything because I was just scared about making things worse. And when you have that fear and you just choose not to talk about anything and to just be silent, you are doing more harm for your relationship than you think. First of all, having the ability to communicate is one thing. So communicate. Second of all, don't just say anything. Don't just say what comes to mind. If you're like in your most annoyed state, you know yourself. And if you know that you're going to say something that you're going to regret later, you're probably not in the right state of mind to be having a constructive conversation with your partner. So being able to detect those moments is so important. Putting a pause on communication is huge. So initiating conversation, pausing the conversation, and then having a productive conversation is another big Thing. This is the final question. What advice would you give to someone who is looking for love? My advice would be to stop looking. Just stop. I'm Michael Jordan. Stop it. Like I mentioned earlier, it usually comes to you when you're not looking. Stop looking, work on yourself, love yourself first. Anyways, like I had so much fun with this. I love chat GPT. Thank you for coming on. You asked some really insightful questions that I had really long answers to, but I appreciate it. And if you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. I'm a newbie, okay? I had a lot of fun today. I've been filming for like 40 minutes. If you do want me to do another video like this, let me know what topic I should do next. If you like my content, if you like me, subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video. And happy love day love yourself love your partner your partners love your family your friends your pets your birds your food the earth and i'll see you next time bye